Hi, I'm Sarah. Today I am recapping episode nine of Survivor with a very special guest co-host. You guys, Desi is here with us today. Thank Thanks you for so much me, for thank you for joining me. How first before we dive into this episode, just give me a sense of how you're feeling about this season. I'm actually shockingly into this season. I've never been like a super survivor fan, mm -hmm. but I find myself every Wednesday, like asking my fiance, like, do you mind if we watch survivor tonight? So sometimes he wants to watch like basketball or something. I have to watch in the other room, but sure. even he's been kind of following along, which has been shocking because I, okay. I, I had to force him to watch even me on TV. So <laughs> what? Oh. That he's into this season. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad we've sucked him in as well. Although I have to imagine watching someone you care about is a whole different thing. Oh, yeah. I have friends who literally didn't even watch the challenge because they were like watching you on Survivor, especially because I like when I went out, I kind of, I, I mean, I bought both times I went out on Survivor. <laughs> and I'm like, you just couldn't watch you be that sad. Um, so I have friends right? who didn't watch the challenge at all because they were like, my psyche can't handle that again. Right. And, and you went out in a tough way again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I knew that. I was like, oh, well, this is going to be a, I couldn't tell it was going to be a tough ending for me, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of knew in the back of my head, like, if you couldn't handle Survivor, you won't be able to handle this. <laughs> this You're like, go ahead. It's okay. You don't have to watch. Right. I'll give you a pass. Right. Well, you guys, we're going to dive into this episode. But first, if you're new to this channel, please click subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We, uh, we've got two tribals here today. Uh, I really liked this episode. We had some good plans that came together. Yeah, this Did episode you... was a shocker there. I um, admittedly had James as my winner pick. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a sad, <laughs> it's a sad yeah. episode for me as all of my like prediction dreams fell apart. But right. <laughs> it was a great episode. A lot of really great gameplay that I did not see coming. I Yes, from some people, especially. Well, we're going to start, you know, a little bit of fallout from the tribal before uh, Sammy sort of reveals that, he, you know, he had tried to make this move last week, but he didn't have the numbers. But then we get into this whole Owen voting. And it's, it's an act which confused me because we knew Owen voted on the right side last week, or at least we saw it at the end, that it was Cassidy and Janine who voted incorrectly. Uh, so it was a little confusing here where they're playing this off like Owen still didn't know, but that leads us into him just being super mad at James. Yeah, I mean, I think he's mad because he feels alienated, right? He's mm -hmm. like, I'm trying to play with you. I've been trying to play with you. I've written down who you told me to write down. Um, so I can see where Owen is coming from, where he's like, I am literally doing everything I can to try to gain your trust and still you're not trusting me. So, I mean, I think it's revealed that Owen knew who to vote for simply because of Gabler told him at the end. Um, but I can see where he's still kind of annoyed at James because he's, he's kind of extending as many olive branches as he can. And James is just like, yeah. Meh. Right. It is what it is, I think is what he said. Like, yeah. I mean, they're clearly not working well together. They're both just annoyed with each other. And James has a great line here where he says, if you break trust with James, you go home. And, I know. Yeah. And you know, I, I guess because I was team James, I heard that foreshadowing and I was like, ooh, Owen's going home. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, we're definitely set up with like either Owen or James is going, right? Yeah, yeah. And I didn't, never in a million years did I think Carla would switch on James, but I think at the end of the day, it really didn't matter. But yeah, it was, yeah, I guess they kind of set it up that way. But in the back of my head, I was like, oh, poor, poor Owen. He's going oh, home. poor Owen. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't think no. it was going to be James. Well, we go quickly into the immunity challenge here. And this is where Jeff's going to explain we're going to separate into two groups. One from each group is going to win immunity. The last standing will win reward, which is PB&J. Now, I think PB&J is one of the best rewards you can get on Survivor. How do you feel? I, I agree. I mean, any food is like the best reward you can get on Survivor. But there's something about like 
peanut butter and jelly or peanut. I mean, for me, I don't like peanut butter and jelly, but I just love oh. peanut butter. And I couldn't even, I mean, we had countless conversations on the island about peanut butter. It was like yeah. all anybody wanted to eat. So I think it's, it's a solid, uh, solid reward. There's just, I mean, you've got a little bit of protein. It'll stick with you when you guys get rewards like steak and you haven't eaten and then people gorge on things that are going to make you sick. I, I get a little worried. No. I mean, yeah. I, for, when you're on the, like, literally they could give me, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something I like would never eat. My grandmother used to eat something called chitlins, which is like pig yeah. intestine. Yeah. Um, disgusting. I don't know why she ate right. it. And I, it smells awful. But if somebody would have given me chitlins on the island of Survivor, I'd have been like, all right, I sure. guess I'm eating chitlins tonight. <laughs> you don't care what they give you. If it's edible, you'll eat it. You'll eat it. All right. Well, that's what they're going to get. Um, it's a classic support a ball over your head with your arms. Don't lose it. Don't let it drop. We've got on our red group here, Cassidy, Jesse, Gabler, Ryan, Cody. Our blue group is James, Carla, Noel, Sammy, and Owen. And quickly, Jesse's going to drop out of this. He doesn't last very long. Then we see Cassidy out. We see Noel eventually fall. Then James. Then Gabler and Owen. This is going to leave us with a little red-blue uh, duels here. Ryan versus Cody. Sammy versus Carla. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a challenge that's kind of based on brute strength, which I, mm -hmm. I didn't love. Going into it, I was like, there's no way... Carla's like I was like there's no way Carla's gonna win this like sorry Carla. right I, just, I wasn't expecting it um she got really great with her strategy and she figured out a way to kind of hold on to it but it, it, it truly was just like muscle endurance which I kind of felt like was unfair I don't know mm. I, I, I guess when they started the challenge I was like clearly a guy with big strong biceps is gonna win this um, right and we kind of well, all did come down to two guys with big strong biceps yeah um, except for the fact that I feel like Cody also figured out kind of like a cheat code. Where he, he figured out a way to extend his arms and like elevate his mm. shoulders, which mm -hmm. is easier. Right. To yeah. He had some sort of way he was like putting his whole body into it. It seemed like, right. Yeah. Which was super, super smart. And maybe I guess in retrospect, like they do test out all these challenges on normal human beings before we play. So maybe in their testing, they figured out that, the ladies or perhaps people who didn't have as much brute strength could figure out a way to sustain. But. Right. And Carla's got a, I guess a broken finger, or at least she's got stitches in her finger and she's having to like do some sort of extra curl thing to not put pressure on that finger. The fact that she lasted as long as she did at all is very impressive. I was thoroughly impressed with Carla really this whole episode but especially during, I, I did not think she had a shot in hell of winning that. And she pulled it but out. But she impressed. does. Yeah. Uh, something goes wrong with Sammy. He's, uh, he's going to, his ball's going to drop. But we do get a 10 minute call at this point, which honestly, I, I don't know. That didn't feel like long, but <laughs> I, to them, I guess it did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess you have to think that like, I don't know. Imagine like taking a full water bottle and just like holding it at a 90 degree angle for 10 minutes. Like that's right. Your muscles are going to fatigue pretty quickly. So yes. 10 minutes doesn't seem like a long time, but I can only imagine like how sore they probably were after that. Cause it's just something that your body doesn't normally do. Right. And they're malnourished. This is, yeah, that they're, they're not at a hundred percent. So now we, we are watching Ryan versus Cody. Carla is not going to be able to be last, last person standing. So we do know that uh, the red group is going to get PB and J's, but Ryan is going to eventually drop and Cody is going to get it. Now I was happy for Cody because he has been in second Play. He's almost won the last two weeks, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I the last three weeks, but three, I, I think, right? Yeah, it might be. I being almost the winner is not great because you look like a challenge threat, but you're not getting safety. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> kind of the worst spot to be in, and yeah. uh, that was that was when I went out of Survivor, right? It was like an individual immunity. I got second place. I uh, know I don't think I got second place. Then. I can't remember, but I. 
was close and then yep. went home that same day. So it's, it's a tough spot to be in. And it's, it's actually shocking to me that people haven't said Cody's name more than they've, like, I haven't heard his name at all. No, I've only heard his name in like, let's protect him and keep him. Yeah. yeah. And same with Carla. Like, neither one of these people actually needed to win, but they love it. Good for them for their resume. And just, you know, it's fulfilling, obviously. Yeah, I'm sure this was huge for Carla. I mean, just, I mean, it's huge for, I don't know. I, I feel like it's huge for anyone to win individual immunity. But yeah. like I said, I don't. I feel like Carla saw that challenge the same way I saw that challenge and thought like, this is going to be brute strength. Mm -hmm. And then she, she pulled it off. So I, I think she should come out of this episode feeling really, really proud. Yeah. I feel like this whole season she's been doing really, really well, just kind of a very powerful player, but not in people's face about it. Yeah. Yeah. She was mm -hmm. in a good spot. Mm -hmm. So, all right, we are going to start uh, back at our camp discussions here with the winning group, Red. They're going to eat their PB&Js. They're feeling great about it. They're full. And Ryan is going to quickly work on Cassidy being the target. Not too surprising. They haven't worked together. They've been going against each other. He threw an immunity challenge weeks ago to try to get her out, he's gonna keep trying here. Yeah, it's it's weird that he's so stuck on getting Cassidy out, but it's, I guess, I mean, it's smart. She also is stuck on getting Ryan out. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it's fair. I did not, I don't know. I did not think it would go in, uh, I don't know. I didn't think it would go in Ryan's favor. I, I just no. feel like it's hard to take him as like a serious strategic player. And I hate to yeah. say that. Right, but. right. Beautiful smile, but not a lot of strategy going on yeah, there. Yeah, super kind guy, but yeah, I, I think he's very much thinking, like, he's very tunnel vision. He's thinking of this one vote. I don't think he's thinking mm -hmm. down the line. Um, right. He's thinking about fishing. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so Jesse and Cassidy, we see saying Ryan's name to Cody. And then Cody gives us this interesting almost like super honest vibe where he's just not committing and he's saying, I'm not sure which way to go. And of course, Cassidy is doing her best to say, but I want to work with you. We're great together. I'll work with you forever and try to sort of get Cody on her side. I actually think that's a good strategy for Cody because I do think at that point in time, he hadn't made up his mind. Mm -hmm. So by like being a very straight shooter, like I'm not sure yet, if he chooses not to go with Cassie, it's not like he's backstabbed her because he never committed to go with her. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if he chooses to vote Cassie, you know, like, I think he's, I, I think it was a smart way to respond. Uh, right. Because I also don't feel like Cassie, like, I feel like Cassie is on the right side. She's aligned with the right people, but I don't know that she's driving the decisions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe has a sense of that. I feel like Cody is a, a very intuitive, like he, I feel like he's a very intuitive player. Yeah. And he's, he has been driving some, some votes here. Um, yeah, I agree. Like it's, it's risky to not give someone a direct answer and seem super supportive, but it's also, some people can value that honesty and say, well, I feel like they're a straight shooter and not lying to me. And yeah, his, he, and I think per, I feel like he knows he's in a good spot, like personality wise, but he's like, mm -hmm. nobody hates me. So at least I'm not being an asshole. You know, I, I don't know. I just feel like he knows he's in a good yeah. spot socially in the game. Then we get a backstory package on Cassidy. And whenever we get these, I start to become fearful that they're going to leave this episode. Hmm. Yeah, I could see why. Yeah, I could see that. It, you, it, it used to be sort of like a given. They give us a backstory and you're like, oh, then they go. But the editors are getting a little better. They're giving us more packages. We're seeing more character development. And I really like that. And then it helps throw me off of my trying to read and edit. Yeah, I think that's probably, yeah. I'm sure they're doing that on purpose um, <laughs> because they are traditionally pretty easy to like figure out uh, who's going home based upon the edit. So I do feel like that was a good way to do it. 
I've said this before and I like can't get off of it. I do still have a little bit of a problem with like every person on the season being a super fan. I feel like this entire season is just made up of super fans and like nothing wrong with a super fan, but I don't know. I, I like it, it. It makes it harder. I feel like they tell these stories to help you connect to people. But when everybody has that same kind of like, I've been obsessed with Survivor since I was five or since I was three or since I was 10. And it's gotten me through X, Y, Z like thing in my life. And I'm like, everybody has the same story and I can't choose different ways to connect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, interesting. I wonder like, what are your thoughts on the cast full of super fans? Well, I mean, I love it cause I'm a super fan. So I much prefer, I mean, you know, I watch big brother and these other shows and they don't cast any super fans. They'll cast one token super fan and that's really hard to watch. But with Survivor, they have, uh, it's been on for so long. They they do a good job of choosing super fans with some great backstories. I understand your what you're saying. They, they have the room to mix it up where maybe it's half of that and you can still bring in other people who are not as knowledgeable about the game. And it actually would help with the sort of who's running the show, who's willing to be a follower kind of energy. Right, right. I, yeah. I'm Yeah, like I said, I'm not a fan of it, but I can understand why, as most of Survivor fans have been fans for decades, so I can understand why they would be doing that to encourage more, like, fan participation. I mean, that's an interesting perspective, Desi. I have not heard anyone say that. That's so I'm fun. Just, hot take. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sorry, super fans out there, like no shade, but yeah, I'm just like, I don't, I want, I, I, I want some difference in stories. I don't want yeah. the same. Right. I don't want to see everybody's childhood dream. Like give me another something. Give me to other dreams. Latch on to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so that takes us over to our blue loser group who is uh, stuck at a crappy beach and has no food. Um, Carla's going to set us up here that she needs James as her number. I mean, that's no surprise. We've seen them work together this whole time. So she would like to vote out Owen. Then we see Noelle talking to Sammy and Carla about voting out Owen. And I was like, really? This is just an easy Owen vote at this point? Yeah. I mean, they sold that well. And I, mm -hmm. yeah, they sold it well for a second. Yeah. I was like, this doesn't add up. And we're going to find out later why it didn't add up. But then this Owen and James are just going to start arguing. They're both over each other. Neither one can just say, cool, sorry, whatever, walk away. They both have to like keep adding and they take it all the way to camp and then it's an argument in front of everybody yeah i mean it's kind of cringy but also kind of like fantastic do you know what i mean mm -hmm. um <laughs> because there's not I, I do feel like most people try to like play it nice like you can behind somebody's back have an issue with them but it's rare for you to see people like actually go at it on survivor yeah um, and i don't I like know that it's great for your game no, it's 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 not. Yeah, that that was when I was like, uh oh, like maybe James wasn't my best winner pick because here he comes talking a little bit too much and being a little too overconfident. Um, so yeah, that was the beginning of the end, I think, for James. <laughs> but it was it's certainly not helping James at this point. Yeah, certainly certainly not helping James to blow up on someone, especially someone who's as kind and gentle as Owen. Like I, I just did not expect that. Um, and I also think like maybe the element of them being hungry and you're mm -hmm. more irritable when you're hungry, but Owen just seems like the nicest, gentlest, kindest guy. So it was also weird to see him like be so flabbergasted by. Yeah. Him. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like they both just kept up, like not one person was doing it all wrong. They both were, doing it wrong for their games, but very entertaining for those of us watching. Like I appreciate a little spat at camp. Yes, get everybody involved. We get eye rolls, we get faces, we get who wants papaya. I mean. Right. <laughs> I loved so, all of it. I loved no right? less with during that scene. Cause I was like, that is exactly what I would be doing this moment. It's like, hmm. 
like she was just watching TV, eating a papaya. I was like, Can anybody else want a snack while we right. watch this drama unfold? <laughs> so I uh, yes. That. Yeah, love it for all of us. Um, not thinking it's great for either Owen or James at this point. So we're going to go back to our red group and we see Cody and Jesse basically debating between Ryan and Cassidy. And they are seeing upsides to both and downsides to both. And interestingly, they're really concerned with how it affects Carla. Yeah, yeah which I think is a good thought. I, I liked the presentation they made where it's like, if, if the vote goes this way, then we do this and vote goes the other way. Um, I am still shocked by where they landed. I'm still shocked by where they landed. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that that was going to be the best for anybody's game. Um, mm. I don't know. I just have this really strong feeling that people tend to target physical threats when physical threats Never win the not. I mean, maybe there's somebody right. in this group, but like very rarely do they win the game of Survivor. Um, yeah, and I don't know if Cassidy has revealed to them her light, like literally the picture they showed of her. She was a toddler. She was like two or three years old. So she's been watching to see where she was two or three. Like she knows this game. Yeah, and she knows how to wheel and deal in this game in a way that can become dangerous down the line. Where I just mm -hmm. don't feel that same threat level ever coming from our friend Ryan. Yeah. That uh, is a solid point. What I think Cody does really well here is he pulls in Gabler and in such a seemingly authentic way. I mean, it's hard to tell when people resonate with how you approach them, but he's just like, man, let's go. You and me, we got to ride or diet here. And I mean, I think Gabler's just been waiting for someone to say this to him, right? Yeah, to the extent where I was like, that almost felt too easy. <laughs> like, yeah. Was Gabler that easy to pull into your court? He like, I don't know what that forearm shake that they were doing was. That was a little <laughs> odd. I'm not familiar with that, but maybe mm -hmm. it's a bro thing that I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. But I was like, that's literally all it took for them to solidify Gabler on their team. And I think it is. Yeah, because Ryan, I mean, Gabler had been trying to get in with Ryan. That's what we've kind of seen. Like, Gabler, Gabler's been on the outs, so let me befriend Ryan has been his approach. I would guess voting out Ryan would be difficult for him, or he wouldn't want to do that. He's trying to work with Ryan, and Cody just comes up and is like, you and me, man, let's take it all the way. And Gabler just ate it up and was like, yeah, whatever you want. I'm here yeah, for you. Yeah, I mean, I go back and forth with Gabler, because sometimes it's like, is he all, is he involved? Is he all there? Is he participating in this social construct? But <laughs> and then there's the other part of me that's like, I know Gabler is not dumb. Like, right. They kind of treat him like he's dumb, but I'm mm -hmm. like, I know he's not dumb. So I do feel like in that moment, he was like, I could try to stick with Ryan, who is a nice guy, but I think he also could tell that like the influence in the game is never going to be on Ryan's side. So mm -hmm. it's somebody who I, perceived to have influence, which clearly Cody and Jesse have been on the right side of the vote. Like he would have been dumb not to say yes, but it also just felt way too easy. It's like yeah. we have one conversation and now we're teammates. Yeah. They're best we're friends. In. Like what? Uh, Danny McRae joined us for our draft this season and Gabler was his first round pick winner pick. Wow. Right. And so I just have one eye on Gabler the whole time going, what what did Danny see? Like, is he gonna just take this whole thing? I I don't know. I'm fascinated by Gabler. Hey Danny. See. <laughs> I can't imagine like I I can't imagine. And I feel like even if Gabler makes it to the end, I can't see him getting the jury vote. Yeah. I could be wrong. Right. I mean, it definitely depends on who he sits next to. So he's, he's a decent speaker, but he'd have to have something he could talk about. He's going to have to do something spectacular in the coming weeks. Because right. I, yeah, I mean, I think he could make it to the end, but I don't see him at this point winning the vote. Mm -hmm. Well, that we are kind of left uh, at this point with the soundbite of, well, their tribal 
and their vote can be affected by the tribal before them. Maybe their vote changes or is dependent on who they see voted out before them. I don't know if it was, uh, but we're left hanging with that. Going back over to blue, we see Noelle explaining the plan now. She's like, hey, 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 I'm not voting out, Owen. Thank you very much. I want James out. And I thought it was interesting that she she thinks James is running things and has Carla and Cassidy in his pocket, where that is not the way that I have been seeing things, but I find that interesting that she sees it that way. Wait, how do you see it? I, I see it similarly. But Okay, I have been giving all credit to Carla. I think of James and Cassidy as Carla's numbers. It is hard to tell because James and Carla definitely made all of those decisions together. Right back on Coco, but I just felt like Carla was like, this is how I want it. So, you know what, that's know. actually a really acute observation. And I think maybe shows like a bias that even I have that <laughs> actually, now that I reflect on it, I think you're probably right. Carla's making the decisions, but James has the louder bark. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it appear as if Mm -hmm. James is making the decision because he's the one like rah, 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 pulling everyone in. Mm -hmm. But I do, which, I, yeah. which is great for Carla to have that person who can go out and be the voice for her, and maybe it's not blowing back on her as much. And I think it, it did blow back on James a little bit here. Oh yeah, for for sure. He for <laughs> sure has a lot of spark this episode, no doubt about it. <laughs> So Noelle comes up with a plan and I gotta say, I had no idea that this was in Noelle. She is ready to use her steal a vote, but she is telling Jane or yeah, she's telling James first, I'm going to steal Owen's vote, keep him feeling safe. He doesn't use his shot in the dark. I've stolen it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then we'll vote him out. And James is like, great. Cut to her explaining. This is actually to make James feel safe. So he doesn't use his knowledge as power. And actually, she will steal Owen's vote, but vote the way he would to vote James out. I was like, what? Yeah, it was a great elaborate plan. And I do feel like in Noelle's confessional, she's been hinting for weeks that she's like ready to make mm -hmm. a big move. I do feel like she's been hinting at that. And I don't know if it was all, I feel like it was maybe all leading up until this moment, but I feel like I knew she had this in her all along. Um, <laughs> But I'm afraid. I'm afraid for her now. This was a. Yeah. It was a huge. Not only was it a huge move, but it was such a well thought out plan, in a, such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, I never think like I, they're going to tribal the same day. They there can't be that many hours in between that they were back at the beach and going to tribal. Like quickly, she came up with this elaborate plan, pulled everybody in, got them on board, and executedly executed it flawlessly. I Incredible. Absolutely. Hello, James. Thank you for stopping Hi, by. <laughs> uh, but then this leads us to, oh, wait, Sammy, like everyone else, cares more about Carla than anybody else on the tribe. And he's like, I'm not so easily going to vote out James, but I'd like to, but only if Carla's on board. So he's going to talk to Carla about this. This, I did not think that this plan would work out for Sammy. No. I was like, why why even bring Carla into this? Like, you guys have the numbers. Why would you approach her with this? Why would you tell her? Um, but Sammy's doing, I mean, he's playing both sides in a way that's, I feel like at some point it's got to explode on him. Like, he is revealing too much information. Like, every bit of information he has, he reveals it mm. to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And to a certain point in the game that builds trust, but at some point in the game, I think it's going to backfire on him. It worked out yeah. for him this episode, but I can't imagine that the way he's just spewing information is going to continue to serve him to the remain for the remainder of the game. Yeah, I. He didn't have the agency to pull it off last week. And so it's really shocking to me that he somehow convinced Carla. And I hope we get more of that conversation next week because I need to know what convinced her to go along with this guy who, I mean, she's been aligned with James since the get go. Since the beginning, like literally I like thick as thieves. 
what is Sammy offering that James doesn't have? I, this is a this is fascinating that this worked. But I honestly, at this point, because I'm thinking, Sammy, you don't have it in you to make this work. Uh, but is this going to make Carla like ruin the plan? Like if you give Carla all of this information, right? She just warns James. James uses his knowledge as power first. Uh, we could have had other things happen by giving Carla this information. Yeah. I mean, had Carla... Yeah, I mean, I don't, there must have been more that Sammy said to sell, must have been more because. Yeah, because obviously BFF. Carla. I thought it was her BFF in the game. Yeah. Um, and I'm interested to see whether it comes out, which I guess it has to, that she betrayed James and then where that puts her once the tribe comes back together. Yeah. Um, I don't know what he said to her, but. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, that's why I have a hard time playing this game because I'm like, I, I too would have, if I were James, I would have trusted Carla like with my life at this point mm -hmm. in the game. So for her to just flip the script so easily is still mind boggling. Yeah. And if she had all of the information, not only did she flip against an ally, but she allowed Noel to kind of own this and... So I, I I have a hard time giving Carla any credit other than like Carla went along with the vote, but yeah. Noelle gets the the credit for this out. Well, this I think she got, I, if I were Carla, I would not have taken the credit for this. Like, <laughs> there's no way. It just makes you like, one, you look like a snake. Two, then you look like too strategic of a player. Like, mm. yeah, her taking credit for it in no way would have, I think, helped her game. Um, the only thing I can see and the only reason I can see that maybe she decided to go along with it is because one she was so closely linked to James and I feel like that explosion James had with Owen was maybe just one of many to come and then she kind of ends up in the position that and I ended up with Joe Minna where I was like closely linked to Joe Minna. Joe Minna was causing ruckus so I was like collateral damage. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think that's potentially it and I think also if she I think she also recognized that James is a target now. And if she like somehow goes against that group, like James is going to be a target again next week. Mm -hmm. When James goes home, then she's going to go home because she's already like too closely aligned herself yeah. with him and proven that she's not willing to be malleable in the game and make new relationships outside of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this way she can kind of say like, Oh, I wasn't that close. I cut ties. No big deal. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm playing my own game. Yeah. Yes. Let's go to our first tribal here with this blue group. Uh, they're talking about their bad afternoon at the gross camp. We got to have an Owen versus James retail. The best part is Noel saying, okay, enough testosterone. I'm done. <laughs> so one, I feel like they're overselling this gross camp. Like <laughs> people lived there for day, like, and also like survivors before have also lived on like, the camp isn't that gross, guys. Like, no, the shelter has been taken away, but like, it's still just sand and dirt like every other island on Survivor. Right. I think it's people. right. The lack of shelter, the lack of machete, or you but know, you're only there for a few hours. So, like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> it's not cold like, during the day on Survivor. Like, what's, what's the issue? Right. Sit on the sand, deal with it. Right. Right. Like you would do anyway. Like, I think that part was oversold. Um, but I do appreciate, yeah. I mean, Noelle was entertaining during this entire tribal. Like you hear her say enough testosterone, you see her like rolling her eyes. Like she's giving all of the body language that I feel like all of us were feeling at home, but couldn't contribute and say. Um, <laughs> and I appreciated that. Yes, absolutely. We do see Noelle steal Owen's vote. A little bit of acting going on here. Uh, I did find it interesting when Owen was like, yeah, we were all on the journey together and we gave Noel this advantage, basically. I have forgotten that it was that three, James I Owen. I forgot it was that three too, yeah. That is ironic. Here we are. Yeah, and I'm like, well, I don't even know really why he, I guess that was to like demonstrate his hurt, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It didn't, he didn't feel that sad when he was saying it. He was just like, oh yeah, here's a fun survivor fact. Yeah, here's a fun fact. <laughs> Right. But I don't know. Maybe I don't know why he said it. Uh, but it is good acting. We do see a little bit of Carla and Sammy get the luxury of being 
on the back row. And Sammy is like, which way are we going? It's so, I think there was still like decision-making happening at this time. I think there was still decision-making for, this is where I feel like Sammy maybe showed his age a little, like, I feel like Sammy should just like, Sammy, you, all you have to do is choose a side. Like <laughs> it, it really does not matter what Carla does at this vote. Like you choose who you're voting for. And I, I feel like Carla like wasn't giving him anything. She was just like, like, I don't feel like she really gave him an answer in that yeah. back and forth elbow tapping. And ultimately I think she went along with him, but it was like, Sammy, it doesn't really matter. Like you, you have to make a decision. Like this is your decision. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I felt that way last week. I was like, Sammy could have pulled a move last week. He didn't need to tell the entire camp, but he wanted everyone's approval. And this week he needed Carla's approval. And I don't love that in long term. Sure. Pair up with Carla. Apparently everyone wants to. Right. Um, <laughs> right. Right. But at some point in time, you need to, yeah, just be like, this is what I'm doing. And Either way, Sammy, it's not you going home. Like you're yeah. the you're essentially the swing vote. Like just choose. Right. Yeah. Uh we do see that James votes for Owen and Noel votes for James. Those are guaranteed. We know that. Uh, but then the votes do come in, and we're only gonna have the one vote for Owen. The rest are for James. So even though we don't get the flash of votes later, it's clear that Carla joined the group and voted james out yeah sad sad moment sad i mean sad and also like does she lose james's jury vote if she does make it to the end like that's a it's a hardcore thing to do yeah i, I so i think and, and I'm, i don't know like what the statistic on this is but i feel like as a viewer at home we get more caught up in like people being butthurt that they were voted off by their ally by mm -hmm. then a player of the game because I feel like when you're playing the game you're like yeah they voted me out but I respect the move for that person's gameplay and I, I mm. think it was very clear or at least it appeared as a viewer and I feel like James felt like he was running the game mm -hmm. even though I feel like what you revealed about Carla is now true I feel like James felt like he was running the game so I feel yeah. like he still respect Carla's game enough that if she's in the final three I think there's still a big chance that who's voting for her. Yeah, and there is enough time. There's several more people that need to be voted out. So maybe he... Right, he has time to like cope and heal. And... Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but I'm not convinced that losing James is great for Carla's game. Although it seems like she's sitting pretty. Everyone is concerned about her. Uh, but he was a very solid ally. I mean, you did make good points about like if he pulls her down with his game going down. But uh, he was definitely a, a loyal number to her. Oh, I mean, I totally agree. I I think he was the most loyal number to her. And it'll be interesting to see because, as you said, everybody's concerned with Carla, which then means, like, is now all the eyes going to be out on Carla, you know? Like, mm -hmm. um, hmm. Thank Bye. you for the super chat, Asher. You are liking Carla. Heard her compared to Kim. I haven't heard that, but I don't hate it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I think it could go one of two ways for Carla. I think Carla's been playing a strong game, but a quiet game. Um, and I, it's hard to determine if people are so concerned about Carla because they see her as such a strategic player, or if they're just concerned with Carla because they genuinely like Carla. Want to and work I, with her. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I think that's still left to be determined. Like, mm -hmm. why is Carla? Why, like, in literally everybody's mouth. Yeah. Um, and it might just yeah. be simply because they all trust her, which is yeah. a she good It seems either. like she's got some little pool over them, like a little bit of a mist. Yeah, um, yeah. So James is gonna walk out perturbed, obviously. He was blindsided, did not see this coming. Uh, he says he'll take it as a sign of respect, which they all agree with, and I think is true. Like he was, he was no slouch, and that's why they got him out. Uh, but then he throws in a little, see how far you'll get now. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I didn't like that for James. I did not like that exit. Um, yeah, and I guess, I mean, I, I assume that was directed towards Carla directly, but mm. it's just like, dude, you're gone. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> but I, I also understand in that moment, like he, I think he was so shocked 
that he was just like, what the F just happened and how long, like, I feel like that's what goes in through your mind. It's like, how long have I been being played by the people mm-hmm. who I trusted the most? Mm-hmm. And I feel like a little bit of that was like that coming out, which just like, right. How long have you been lying to me, Carla? Like, I thought you were my girl. Right. Uh, he also did say cool beans and I appreciate that he's trying to bring that back because I say cool beans. <laughs> And yeah. nobody, nobody else does. So, yeah, I did hate though, because I I am one of those people who always waits for like the credits to see what people have to say, yeah. and I hate that they didn't have like James didn't get one of those little like with the fire behind him at the end of Tribal talking about. He did get a little bit. It was the, like a little over kind of thing. Yeah, it, yeah. I we need that with the votes, and we need that whole shebang. Um, yeah. Okay, tribal number two, they're going to walk in and they're going to act real shocked. Some of the faces were a little over, I thought. They were like, James sitting on the side? I mean. Wait, do you think, I think, I thought it was genuine. Well, I don't I know. They just. Like my mouth, my jaw was genuinely dropped. When yeah. James- no, I was surprised that James actually went. Like I was surprised that they pulled off that move, all of it. Uh and so I I understand that they would be like, whoa, James went. But I don't know. I felt like their some of their faces were just like over. I, I mean, was, which is probably true. You're like, how am I supposed to react so that my allies think I'm still on the same side as my allies? So there's right. a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah, I felt like it was so like. James still thinks I like him and I can get his jury vote. Of exactly. It was like, oh, James, I would never have voted against you. It felt like it was that. Yeah. Yeah. But that could be me just reading into faces. Some yeah, I think I was still too shocked and like I was still too uh, stabbed in the heart at that moment to feel like anybody else's feelings weren't genuine. Yeah. And then Jesse is going to start us off with talking about why he's surprised that James went. And this is a legit uh, reason why you'd be surprised. But I also... Well, okay, so he says James had the knowledge is power and there were people in that group with advantages feel like he could have made a move. And yes, that's a that's so fair that you would be surprised that James didn't make that move uh, and he's sitting over there. But it's also like a complete stab to James. Right. Who's like, yeah, thank you. I got played right. so I hard. I have hands in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't know if you know that you just like stabbed him, Jesse, with that information. Yeah, and I don't know that Jesse was uh, meant to that like where with. No. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it was right. supposed to be a big game. I think he was no. generally just like, how did this dude go home with an advantage in your pocket? Because I think that's like the worst position to be in in Survivor. It's like, ugh, I could have saved myself. But, but the knowledge is power is apparently a curse. Like this thing is not working. That's what, so I actually, and this is where I feel like they don't totally explain the advantages well when they get them now, because they do the same advantages every season and you're supposed to just know what they mean. But I had to like look up knowledge is power to like truly understand how it worked. Um, but yeah, apparently it's never. Well, well. you got to keep it a secret first. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And- I guess that's. Every single season, they have to tell people they can't keep it a secret. And that's just, it's literally in the title, knowledge is power. And you're giving other people the power to override your power. It's one of these days, maybe. I don't know. I yeah, don't know if it's yeah, ever going to work. I don't know. It feels like they, yeah, it's not working. Might as well get rid of it. The, uh, Cassidy, I feel like, was trying to get on Jeff's good side here. She starts talking about the monster wanting two heads this this day, this tribal. Uh, and she'll be invited back for another season. because she <laughs> Simply because she played along with Jeff. So. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably right. And <laughs> at this point, I start to tune out tribal council. I'm like, why are you here? Still- right, because they're all lying and they're not making any sense. Uh, the only other important thing here is that Ryan tells us he's got a whole bag full of clams. In case he gets voted out. What does that even mean? I literally looked over at Jeremy and I was like, why is he talking about shells right now? Like I couldn't even insert it in the context. Why was he telling us that? Because he's the provider, right? He's the fisherman. He got food for everybody and to threaten them, they don't get to eat. If they vote him out, he takes the food with him. Oh, I, I literally was thinking he had like 
a bag full of like decorative shells that you can take <laughs> home as souvenirs. And I was like, okay, bro, go off. Like cute, 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 that's for your room, whatever. Okay, I guess that makes sense. But I was just like, what are you talking about, right? But thank you. For well, that. I mean, it, it it can make sense, but it it's it kind of goes against the way I thought Ryan was playing. Ryan's been this whole like, I am the provider all is well, right? You guys love me. Look at all the fish I got you. And then to like use it as a threat seems different than what he's been showing us. But the rest of them said, we don't care. We'll catch our own clams uh, because that I didn't work. I think this work. is the issue I have with tribal councils. I feel like by the time we get to tribal, everybody's made their decision already. Like, so all mm -hmm. the talk, literally just talk. Right. I mean, I guess part of it is like, which I feel like they don't do a good job of doing. For me, the point of tribal at this point in the game is to demonstrate to the jury what's going on inside the game so that they know who to vote for at the end, who's making the big moves, like who is running the show. That to me, I feel like is the benefit of a tribal council at this point in the game, not to talk yeah. about monsters and two heads and like the metaphors and all of like, I just, it just feels like a waste of time to me personally, but right I could yes that. no i agree half of what they're saying is deflection to each other you can't trust anything they're saying it's um maybe we get a glimpse into who's gonna win exactly uh we're gonna see ryan vote for cassidy and cassidy vote for ryan obviously they both are going after each other but then the votes are one for cassidy the rest for ryan and again i am shocked I am shocked too. I think Cassidy is a bigger threat here, but, and Ryan's going to, I guess, keep getting your food. So why send him home? Um, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. Hmm, I, I uh, personally was hoping we didn't lose Cassidy only because we've lost so many women. Hmm, yeah. We're down to three. Uh, so just for that sake, which is not a good game reason, but, uh, I was excited that we lost two men just because the season has gone that way. Uh, but you, you're making a really great point. Ryan was a provider. He was a shield. I think Cody was definitely using him as a shield. Uh, and he was not a strategic threat. I think he had already proven he couldn't really get votes at the end. Why not right. drag him along? Yeah. Take Ryan to the end. That's what I would do. But I wonder because they gave us that nugget of, you know, we'll see who was voted out first and maybe that'll affect our decision. And they saw that Carla lost James. Uh, and so did that affect like they give her Cassidy's as to not completely make her mad? Oh, okay. Do you think they change their? I, I don't know. I don't know if they could. They change their vote in that moment. I feel like there was something else that maybe it's possible, but the time it takes, like I just the time from when they walked in and saw who went home to sat down. There's not a whole lot of time for like talking. They don't really want right. you to talk that much. Where like at least talking that's not able to be picked up on camera. So. I feel like we would have seen some whispering, which they've seen, shown us before. It's like, right. I think they would have shown some whispering if they were going back and forth in that moment. Cause it would have added some suspense as a viewer, like, Ooh, what's happening. Mm -hmm. and they didn't yeah. You're right. There was no whispers between Cody and Jesse. Like there didn't seem to be any com conversation between them at all. Yeah. Let me so turn on my, it. Uh, Oh, it got dark. Uh, it's dark over here on the West coast now. You're in Southern California, right? Yeah, I'm in LA. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, uh, it's getting dark these days. Um, well, that's it. Like I said, I was shocked that we both, I mean, these were pretty decent, like, blind sides, uh, even if I don't agree with, you know, who these votes were good for. Um, but everyone's got to do what they think is right for their game. Uh, and then our next episode preview just seems like absolute chaos and everybody's names are being thrown around. So. Oh, wait, sorry. You kind of cut in and out for some reason, oh. that last comment. Just, just setting up that next week seems like chaos. Everyone's names. They're just throwing us no specific details at this time. Yeah. I, I mean, I love it. I love it. And I think like you 
to, I think the editors have been doing a good job because the people who we saw kind of rising to the top and it's like, oh, they are, like, I don't know. It's just hard to follow what everybody's thinking in every moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited. Well, you lost, you lost your winner pick. So who is your next, your next pick? Who are you loving? <sighs> I, I don't want to, I feel like I'm going to like curse these people. Um, I, at this <laughs> point, really like Cody, but I don't think he'll win because he's a physical player. Um, mm. I don't know. He's pretty strategic though, too. Don't you think? Yeah. he's. I mean, he's super strategic. I just think that when it comes down to it and people I just feel like people tend to vote out physical players. So if they start mm -hmm. to see him as both a physical player and a strategic right. player, yeah, he's a clear person, like he's the easiest vote. Why wouldn't we get rid of him? Um, I would be gunning. I mean, I love Cody. I'm enjoying him, but I would be trying to get him out for sure right now. Yeah, he's too. Yeah, I mean, who hates Cody? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one. Um, and then I think Carla's in a good spot. Yeah. And, and like I said, I, it's hard to tell whether people are concerned with her because they feel like she's running the game or because they feel like they really like her. So I feel like yeah. I need to see one more episode to see that, like this interaction to mm -hmm. figure out where her story is going to go. Yeah. I kind of like her and Jesse working together. We, we've gotten little hints of that, but he's also working with Cody. I wonder if the two of them would pair up and get rid of Cody or make some move like that, I wonder. Mm, I could see that. I think Jesse is doing his damnedest to try to run this game and it always mm -hmm. kind of slips right past him. Um, yeah. I mean, he's on the right side, but I don't feel like anybody's seeing him necessarily as a threat. Um, so. Although we do see a soundbite of him saying that he feels great about where he is in the game. And I think, oh boy, whenever someone says that, they're in trouble, so. Yeah. That's true. We saw saw how that ended for Ellie. That was like the best sound bite I think of the season so oh far. Oh my God, that um, was tough. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, that was really rough to see. Well, uh, thank you so much, Desi, for joining, coming on and talking about the season. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, so fun. Is there anything coming up that you want to tell people about or have them follow you? Yeah, yeah, follow me if you're not already. Um, I'm Desi J. Williams on Instagram. That's pretty much the only place I'm active. So I'd love if people followed me there. Um, I'm working on a, like hosting a new show. It's mostly for college kids, but it's like telling the story of a college through the lens of its students. It's called The College Tour. So Ooh. that's online and well, it's not out yet. We just shot the first okay. two episodes, but when it comes out, I'm sure I'll post about it on Instagram. So I would love for people to follow and tune in. Um, what am I asking? Uh, if Devin, Chrissy, and Ryan were the final three of your season? Who would I vote for? Yeah. That's like, I mean, that's actually a really good question. Um, <laughs> and really hard to answer. Who would I have voted hmm. for? Stumped her. Uh, I think I... I think I probably would have voted for Ryan. Mm. It's still shocking to me that Ryan made it to the final three. So the fact that the man survived that long, like, mm. I'd give him the money. All right. Mm, interesting. That's unpopular opinion because I know Chrissy is everybody's queen, but she's not mine. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's no secret to anybody. So. Yes. Yes. It's just the truth. And you're allowed. You are literally on that season. You are allowed to say all of that loud and clear, however you want. Uh, chat, thank you guys so much for joining us uh, and hanging out with us. We appreciate your insights and keeping us on our toes with information. And if anyone is joining later, leave a comment. First, tell us how much you love Desi. Um, and then tell us who you're rooting for uh, and how you felt about this episode and this double vote out, double blindside. All right, you guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.